Is that on? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and just for all. Please remain standing. Tonight I ask for a moment of silence from former Alderman, Council President, and County Legislator Ron Brown. May he rest in peace. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Roll call. Rem Kassoon. Here. Johnson. Here. John Francois. Here. Sid. Here. Witt. Here. Kleiner. Here. Burr. Here. Massey. Here. President Rodriguez. Here. We have a quorum. Correspondence? Um, no. Approval minutes? We, tonight we have minutes from October 3rd, 2017. Motion to approve the minutes. So moved. Alderman Massey, second by Alderman Burr. All in favor? Aye. 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 Correspondence. Nothing this evening. For the good of the city, anyone would like to address this council, please step forward. You have four minutes. You're special. You can have more. I don't think my mic's on. Uh, good after. Uh, good evening. <laughs> I promise Alderman Massey that, that I will not do the filibuster tonight. <laughs> and I don't think my throat will allow me. I'm joined <laughs> here by uh, my dear friend and colleague of the school board, Vince Crescenzo. Um, a couple of just uh, issues to raise that will be of interest to the members of the Common Council as well as to the Middletown community and parents. Uh, as you all may know, there's been a school district funding case before the appellate courts, Maestro v. State. Back on October 27, the Times Herald Record reported uh, that the lawsuit filed by eight uh, small city school districts, uh, that the appellate division ruled in favor of them by having the case sent back to the lower level trial court to consider uh, whether a school funding makes a difference in academic results. Uh, the lower court has been ordered to evaluate teachers, class size, academic intervention services, extended learning opportunities, and uh, cuts on social workers on how the reduction and elimination of these resources affects student performance. Even though the Middletown School District is not a party to the case, our school board had recently voted to support this lawsuit. And basically the main question here is whether New York State is keeping its commitment. Under the fair funding formula that was established by New York State, where our school district and many of these school districts received the funds that we would be entitled to under the law, you're talking about billions more possibly to fund uh, academic programs our students may need and at the same time could possibly result in property taxes being reduced. So it's a win-win for our students and a win-win for homeowners. Lower property taxes, more families moving into our community, stronger uh, tax base. So of course I urge all our elected officials to keep on top of this issue as parents to make sure that fair funding eventually wins today. Uh, on December 5th, the Middletown uh, School District will be hosting a uh, referendum on the sale of the Memorial, of Memorial School Building. As you know, Memorial School was a school building that for many, for generations, uh, served uh, students and families of Middletown since uh, after World War I, named in memory of our soldiers that fought in the war to end all wars, uh, until about 1997. If the sale goes through, uh, the referendum's approved, the sale goes through, uh, we're talking about a saving of about $40,000 uh, a year in insurance costs, savings for our school district and taxpayers. And uh, on October 26th, uh, Dr. Kenneth Heathquist, superintendent, uh, announced uh, his retirement that will take effect February 1st after 13.5 years on the helm. I hope I haven't met the four minutes yet. Okay. <laughs> um, among the accomplishments during these uh, 13 years has been graduation rates have gone from 51 to 89 percent. 60 percent of graduates attend college and 40 percent of our high school students graduate with college credits. And our districts become nationally recognized as a two-year with two-year kindergarten, blended learning, uh, music expansion program, the free college tuition plan. Our school district established $190 million in capital improvement and many other initiatives. And on the last uh, school board meeting, November 16, the school board approved a five-year continuation and development plan to keep many of these programs that are popular and proven successful in place for our students uh, during the coming years. 
So pretty much that's where we stand today. And the last uh, thing, uh, our board president, John Perino, has asked me and uh, um, my colleague, Rose uh, Tobiasen, who also comes to the Middletown meetings, to uh, set up a committee to look at uh, bringing back our school uh, uh, board meetings and the Middletown School District activities to live TV, I believe Channel 20. I know many of our elected officials, both Middletown as well as Town of Wallkill and residents have, have asked us to work on that. So we're going to look at the, the, the prospects of doing that, the cost, FCC regulations, uh, equipment cost, and how the municipalities could assist in bringing that hopefully in the near future. So that's pretty much it. Thank you. And wish everybody a wonderful Thanksgiving. And as we celebrate those first, uh, this holiday of our, where the pilgrims envision a city on the hill, we're very grateful to all our outstanding elected officials who work to make our city here a shining city on the hill. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else would like to address the council? <coughs> Hi, my name is Dennis Fanton, and I'm a homeowner on uh, West Main Street. I'm not a public speaker, so please bear with me. Um, I would like to know what the plans are for the Munhagen Brook project. I've heard in different meetings that the money is available. So, okay, we've established the money is, is available, but I'd like to know, like, where are we going with that? It's now the end of the season. I'm sure that the work is not going to be done during the winter. Um, I've had uh, Jacob over the property. I've had land surveyors at least five times. Um, I've had the tree markings as to what trees they were going to re be removed, and um, uh, nothing has been done. Um, the wall is deteriorating. I've had people come over and they removed slabs from the brook and put them on the side in the, in the woods, and they're just still sitting there. The thing that concerns me is with this climate change, there's going to be more volume of water, stronger storms, and I'm afraid that part of that wall is going to fall into the stream and block the tunnel. If that happens, we're going to have the same thing that happened with Irene, and I don't want to go through that again. Um, another thing, too, is there's a lot of building going on around here, and uh, what that means that there's less water absorption, more parking lots. So where's that water going to go? It's going to go into that stream. There was talk about a retention pond. I don't see anything being done. I feel that the people on West Main Street have a right to know at this point what is exactly going on with that uh, project. That's number one. The second thing I spoke to the chief about is speeding on West Main Street. There is absolutely no control of the speed limit. The motorcyclists drive twice the speed limit on that road. And um, I noticed that there is a solar traffic um, light well, it's a flashing light, on Monhagen Avenue, not Monhagen Avenue, on Highland Avenue, which I think is great. But if you look at the terrain, the road is wider on that, on that area. The, the uh, property is quite a distance from the house. And if you look at West Main Street, the houses are right on the street. We have a lot of um, traffic with buses and children on that road. And I really think that one of those signs sh should be on that road. It really needs to be because it's a danger. I've seen a lot of activity with state troopers there uh, during the past couple weeks, and they've been pull pulling a lot of people over. So if, you, if they want to look to see what the statistics are in regards to tickets, check with the state troopers. Um, the other thing is the deer situation. Um, there's a deer herd that are up in the psych center, and they come across West Main Street onto my property, into my neighbor's property, into the woods. That's fine. But the thing is, is that I really feel that there needs to be a deer sign there. If the people are not going to look at the speed limit signs, at least if you have a sign that's the same color as the ones you have in Highland, it's like a limey green color with a deer on it, at least maybe they'll realize that there are deer in the area and they might slow down. But Two years ago, uh, we had an incident where a fawn was hit by a car, and the police had to come and they had to euthanize the deer. And it was not a pretty picture. So I think that really something needs to be done about that. Uh, so basically, that's what I have to say. Um, but I really stress, I, I hope that um, 
information is being put out for the people in that area on West Main Street because we really have gone through a lot with Irene and I, I don't want to go through that again. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else would like to address the council? Bob Dietrich, uh, Chestnut Street. Um, I had three things. I can't remember the third. But. <laughs> Should run for president. Go ahead. <laughs> um, this Saturday, I uh, took part in the uh, the walk uh, for Corey White Jr., um, which was, you know, a really great activity in the city. Uh, I think the paper said there were about 137 people. How they came up with that, I don't know, but it was a good number of people. Um, one of the things that that at the end of the walk uh, that concerned me was that they had a number of speakers and uh, and the main speaker outside the church uh, was talking about his perception I think also the perception it seemed of most of the African American community that the city is unsafe uh, that because of that people don't want to stay here and that people don't want to invest in the community uh, in businesses you know and uh, we all know that you know from reports from our chief of police that that's not true however it's a perception that the community has so what I'm saying is that perhaps there needs to be some outreach in especially in the african-american community to try to dispel that myth or untruth um, and you know it's a sizable part of our city and uh, you know I think it's something that's worthwhile uh, second thing is uh, that I walk downtown almost daily uh, and I take the same route approximately every day and it's what has happened is that walking down West Main Street especially at night, I have no alternative but to walk in the street. Sidewalks are terrible, especially where there had been old blue stone, um, and, and the lighting is poor. Uh, I think that, I, that lighting isn't adequate until I get somewhere around uh, Crescent Place uh, and Knapp Street, okay? But the, the, the sidewalk is terrible, and as we come to winter, it's only gonna get worse. Um, and it's, you know, we're looking to do the improvement of downtown, but uh, as you come from Wickham Avenue to 11, all the way downtown to where police station is, it's almost impossible to walk on the sidewalk. Um, and especially right by uh, where the police park their cars. It's, you know, so I know that that's probably in the plans in terms of what happens downtown, but right now it's uh, not conducive to walking. Okay. And I, as I said, I can't remember the third thing, but maybe next time. All right, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? I forgot the third thing. <laughs> <laughs> Mary Lou showed me as I walked in. Uh, the third thing is is that the uh, what we have here now with the skateboard park is fantastic. You know, it's happening all the time. Uh, when I saw a couple of the uh, young people down there, and now we do have a port of sand there, and they're all very happy about that. Um, <clears throat> but I was thinking that, that I'm not sure if in our plans that there's going to be, you know, that, that's a great thing for the young people. But in our plans, if there's something similar that we could do to bring some older folks downtown. All right, so uh, my idea would be something like pickleball, which uh, Brink and I have talked about. Um, or, or maybe bocce ball, which I think we used to have at Thrall Park, uh, but I don't think we don't have we have that anymore. But that would be a great thing that if we're drawing people down here to go to the restaurants and to uh, the various uh, breweries that we have down there, it might be something that people could take part of and then also go to the businesses. And that was the other thir the third thing. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Remarks of the department heads. Economic development. <clears throat> uh, 
Good evening, everyone. Um, last week, the mayor rolled out the facade program for our DRI. We had a great turnout here. Um, well over 50 people participated that evening. Our office is um, uh, accepting uh, calls and to send out applications. You must be in the DRI district, which is the bid district, to qualify. And then there's other factors of qualifications and stuff. But we had a good turnout and a good rollout, so we look forward to a successful um, uh, part of uh, the DRI as a kickoff. So uh, deadlines for those applications are going to be in January, and then there's a committee that's going to make the awards in February, and hopefully early spring, March, April, you're going to see construction um, happening on the facades downtown. Also, um, next week, December 1st, we're going to have a Main Street conference at the Paramount Theater from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. It's going to be a good day to come and see what we're planning for the downtown area, our DRI and other things that are going on throughout the downtown. So it's a good informational session. There's going to be finance people there for loans and developers and stuff like that. So we look forward to a good program on uh, next Friday. Also, it's Thanksgiving and the day after Thanksgiving is tree lighting and uh, Santa arrives in our downtown. So we're all gearing up for Friday. Um, everything be begins at 6 p.m. at Festival Square. Also, the parade will begin down by Garcia's Market and make its way up. Uh, uh, step off is at 630. Uh, we got a, a Big event that night, a lot of participants this year. Um, you know, there's just so much going on uh, with the parade and the lighting. So we look forward to a, a great evening. Hopefully it's a little bit warm, but not too warm. We need that little chill in the air to make it, to make it work. So, um, and Santa will be here to, to light our tree. And um, thanks to the Whedon family for donating this year's beautiful tree. And they'll be in the lead car uh, provided by Healy uh, this year to drive them in to light the tree. Also, right after the tree lighting, we always traditionally show It's a Wonderful Life. It's going to be a free event at the Paramount Theater. So it's just going to be a, a great, um, great uh, start to the, to the holidays in downtown. And I think that's all I have for tonight. Any questions yeah. for Maria? Yeah. Alden McCliner? All right. I, I just wanted to add, because you had it on the press release, to thank, um, is it JHM Tree Service and Regional Trucking and Harry Rotolo who bring the Correct. tree and set it up and they do that volunteer? Yes, the they volunteer. Harry Rotolo and the Electrical Workers Union uh, on Saturday in that rain decorated the tree this past Saturday. So they did all the decorating of the tree. And yes, uh, JHM uh, Tree Service and... Uh, and uh, regional trucking, and of course, all the folks that really have a, a good time and show their holiday spirit uh, in terms of bringing the tree in. And that night, DPW, Parks and Rec, Police Department, the Fire Department. So it, it's all quite a, a great community event, and we, we look forward to that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Well, we're yes. How tall is that tree? Uh, it's close to 30 feet. I don't know. I can <laughs> 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 right, Jacob? Excellent. Excellent. Close enough. I mean, yeah, exactly. Close we try to shoot for 30 or That's a little right. bit over. So, <laughs> Thank you, Maria. Yeah. DPW Commissioner. Good evening. Um, regarding the uh, West Main Street drainage and the Maple Avenue drainage, almost every common council meeting, uh, you got Alderman Johnson, Alderwoman Ram Kassoon, Council President, they asked me and they asked the mayor about the status of it. And uh, it really should be noted that the Common Council a couple of years ago, because of the importance of the project and for the reason to take care of the local residents in there and to save them the agony of, uh, of having to, do with, to, to deal with flooding and insurance and damages and all that stuff, they authorized a couple of hundred thousand dollars in there from city money in order to hire the engineers, in order to progress the project and complete the design and get the approval from the Army Corps of Engineers. All that 
you know, they really stuck their neck out and put out the money in there because they believe in the importance of the project. And um, if you may recall, we had we had a press conference in Maple Hill Park over there. Everybody was was there. The counts the County executive was there, the congressman, Congressman Maloney was there, the senators, everybody was there, elected officials, our own ele elected officials. And that was a few years ago, about promising, them, uh, promise, promising us the money about $2.7 million. So all that happened in there, the Army Corps of Engineers, I went down myself to Manhattan a few times to meet with them, myself and the consulting engineers. I've visited with this gentleman in his own property in there to see what issues are there so we can make sure that we can address them. And he is right, you know, we are frustrated. We share the frustration, but we're almost there. Uh, last week, we finally got the contract signed by the county executive and the mayor. And uh, so now we're waiting for release from HUD for the funding. So we thought that once the contract is signed, we can go out for bid, and that's what I promised you two weeks ago during the last Common Council meeting. So we wanted to go out for bid, and we get an email from community development saying that, hey, you can't go out for bid until HUD releases the money. Now, this money is Sandy's money from a million years ago. Let's <laughs> left over money, and, and uh, you know, it's sitting there, and it's not doing any good sitting in a bank somewhere. So we're very anxious. They promised to give us information next Tuesday Juan Fizino, she's, she's the assistant for the uh, Commissioner of Community Development for the county. She promised to call us. She'll be back from vacation on Tuesday. She expects to have good news from HUD, authorization that the, mon the funds has been re uh, released. And once it is released, then we can go out for bid, for public bidding, for the two projects. There will be a detention pond, as we explained to you before when we, when we met and that's part of the Maple uh, Avenue drainage project. There's going to be a small detention pond. Small, we made it as big as we could within the property that we have to function as a detention pond to try to shave some of the peak of the storm when it occurs to minimize the flooding. So that's where we are. Unfortunately, you know, it's, it's very sad at the, the rate of progress, but sometimes this is how federal government works. And we have, we need the money. It's not like we have, you know, so, so we're almost there. So we promise you to keep, to keep pushing. <laughs> yeah, we will. Yeah, I'm sure, you, you know, you just continue on top of us too, because that helps. We can stay focused. Um, the, curb, the sidewalks, uh, Mr. Dietrich, he spoke about the sidewalks, the mayor, and uh, through Maria's office, community development. They're going to come up with the program, and they're, they're working on a program. Um, into to try to help uh, property owners uh, with some matching fund to encourage them to invest in their sidewalk. I mean, it will be easy for uh, code enforcement to go and write up every sidewalk. And believe me, you have lots of sidewalks that they need immediate attention throughout the city of Middletown. We can go and write them all up and we could cause people, unfortunately, sometimes to lose their homes because of that. Because you're talking about $5,000, $6,000, $7,000 $7, in there. So if there's an incentive in there, which the mayor is very much aware of that, and he's working on that, um, if we can have that incentive to help with the money, using HUD money uh, for, for property owners, so they will lessen the severity of the bite for the financial burden they're going to have by replacing their curbs and sidewalks. And that's where we are, and I think that program is, is, is evolving as we speak. Um, Regarding the lighting, we will take a look at it in there. As you know, the city will be owning the street lights through a project, energy performance contracts with ESG. We're going to be replacing all of our street lights. We're going to buy them from, from Orange and Rockland, and then we're going to be uh, replacing them with LED lights. And that project right now, we're just negotiating at the last step, negotiating with Frontier because some of the poles, they, are, they belong to Frontier, not to Orange and Rockland. Orange and Rockland is ready to sell it. They're not going to charge us even for rent to put the lights on their poles. So the last step is to, um, that we are negotiating with the Frontier regarding that. But any specific dark areas in there, we'll be happy to go take a look at them and see if they need additional lighting. But all, this light, all these lights are going to be owned by the city of Middletown very soon. Uh, the roundabout project, uh, 
we put it out for bid. The bids came within the engineering estimate about $1.5 million. Most of that money is, is federal money through the DOT, not costing us uh, much at all for, for the taxpayers. And instead, we were short about a couple of hundred thousand dollars. So today, we had a meeting, the mayor and myself, we had a meeting with Orange County Transportation Council. And um, the good news is uh, KJ, they volunteered to uh, defer some of the funding that was targeted to one of their projects in order to give us the money, City of Middletown, for about $200,000. And uh, for that, we're very thankful for KJ for, for uh, and this that will help our project to move for, to move forward. So this project will be forward. We expect to have a resolution before you um, next Common Council meeting to award the bid, the construction bid for the roundabout to the low bidder, and I believe it was uh, Boyce Excavation, Black Dirt Sewer. That is the sewer line, the famous sewer line that goes from the new presidential. Uh, Presidential Heights, I believe, or former Chorley School, all the way to Elm Street and Manhagen Street. So that project, we opened the bids, it's around $3.5 million. We were able to get a grant for $1 million. The rest of it is going to be zero interest loan from the State Revolving Fund. Again, we expect to make a recommendation for you to award the bid to uh, the, low con uh, the low bidder which I believe it was also Boyce, Alderman Massey was with me, I think it was Boyce as well. So, uh, SunUp Enterprises, they're finishing the Sterling Street sewer project. The last phase of it is putting a boring under the tunneling or boring under, uh, on Wisner Avenue under the railroad tracks and finalizing a redesign of a section of the sewer between Little Avenue and Washington. So that is taking place right now, and hopefully that, will be, that project will be wrapped up. And um, design of the 20-inch water line from the water treatment plant, like Alderman Kleiner said the other meeting, it goes back to the 1920s, 1930s. That design, you, uh, I thank you very much for awarding the contract for the consulting engineer, and we have started working on that design. And with that, I will stop. If you have any questions for me. Question for Jacob. Thank you, Jacob. Thank you. Fire Chief. Good evening, everybody. Uh, tonight, we just have a, a resolution for a transfer within our budget. So looking for uh, support on that. And we'll be uh, participating in the annual tree lighting with our ladder truck uh, raising Santa to the tree. It's going to work, right? Yes. All's good. <laughs> Chief. Thank you, Chief. Treasurer. Uh, I have nothing tonight unless anybody has any questions, and uh, appreciate your support on the budget. Any questions for the Treasurer? Thank you, Don. Police Chief. Good evening. Uh, just a few, few things this evening. Uh, first and foremost, overnight parking went into effect on November 15th. Uh, the ordinance institutes no parking on any city street from 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. from April, November 15th to April 15th. So just be aware of that um, as we enter into the, this uh, winter season. Uh, some outreach that we're going to continue to do. Uh, November 30th, we're doing some homeless outreach. We're going to go out into the community, seek out people that are in need of services um, with some of our partners, and try to get these people into some type of housing for the winter months before the cold weather really sets in. Um, some additional outreach that we're doing um, for community relations. Uh, we partnered once again with Parks and Rec Department, who's been a great uh, partner with us to do some outreach. December 4th, we're doing a program called Cookies with Cops. We're inviting members of the community to come out uh, and actually bake holiday cookies um, with the police officers um, in a, a dressed down fashion so they could interact with the police officers in a one-on-one -on -one, uh, environment. Um, Earlier this evening, we had a DPW committee meeting. During that meeting, some topics came up uh, specifically to traffic enforcement, uh, more specifically to speeding. One of the topics that came up is the purchase of a new speed trailer, which has been ordered and purchased. And with any luck, it will be in our possession tomorrow. And then you'll start seeing it hopefully throughout the city um, coming in the, the coming weeks. Um, in regards to speeding, just to show that we have increased our 
uh, enforcement efforts. We have partnered with the state police, as you've heard. Um, people are seeing the state police units throughout the city. It is not anything more but to supplement our traffic enforcement. But overall, just the Middletown Police Department has an increase of 21%, um, excuse me, 24% increase in traffic tickets this year, so far this year, out of that 21% increase in speeding tickets so far this year, and just over the last month with the increased enforcement, there's an 88% increase from the previous month. So I do definitely have to credit my staff with going out there and putting the effort in to help with the enforcement, and we will continue to do our best with that. Any questions, questions for the chief? Thank you, chief. Superintendent of Recreation. Good evening, folks. Um, really quick, just to go over some programs with all the holidays here. There's a lot of special events going on. Uh, we did have our turkey trot on Saturday morning. Uh, thank you to the Middletown High School track team and the Mayor's Youth Council uh, and to ShopRite for donating all the turkeys. We had a bunch of happy kids running races over at the Twin Towers track. Um, yesterday, uh, last night right here, was a Mayor's Youth Council meeting. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Assemblywoman Gunther. She came and spoke to the kids. Uh, she had a lot of inspirational things to tell the kids, offering them internships, inviting them to the state capitol, inviting them into City Hall, into our office. Uh, we did have four aldermen here as well, and thank you very much for supporting the kids. The mayor was also here. Um, it really empowers the kids that they have a voice, and the kids running the meeting did a wonderful job. It's really something to see. Um, with the holidays, you'll see the mailboxes are out. <coughs> the letters to the North Pole will be starting. Um, there are uh, mailboxes at Thrall Library here at City Hall, um, the Paramount Theater, the Recreation Department, and in Festival Square. So that is a big program. Um, Saturday, the day after the tree lighting ceremony, is uh, Santa Paws at the Run for Downtown Park. Uh, a lot of people bring their animals to get a picture with Santa. Uh, we also have some different rescues there promoting what they do um, and getting animals some homes. Uh, the chief mentioned December 4th, we have the Cookies and Cops. Wednesday, December 6th is the Gingerbread House building. That's at the Mulberry House. Saturday, December 16th is Pictures with Santa at the Thrall Library. Monday, December 18th is the Huge Polar Express, which is at the Paramount. I believe last year was over 700 people attending that. Friday, December 22nd, we have our parents' night out, which is an opportunity to drop your kids off so parents can do last-minute shopping, wrapping, or maybe even some dinner. Um, and then December 26th, the week of that, the kids have off. We are running a winter, winter break to help families that are working, and they, they might, the kids might need some child care. That's very affordable. So for all those programs, just call the Recreation Department. Many of the holiday programs are all free. We just need you to register so we have a head count. And lastly, with programming, as a reminder, I've said it before, winter registration is going on now for basketball, volleyball, soccer, cheerleading. Please register. It's filling up. And we also still have some openings in our after-school program. Uh, the community was really talking about getting affordable after-school program, and we've met those needs. But we still have some openings. Um, so if you have elementary students and looking for care after school, contact the Recreation Department. That's all I have tonight. Any questions for Chris? Thank you, Chris. Corporation Council. Uh, okay. City Clerk. I have nothing to see. Thank you for John. Thank you, John. <coughs> Here's I here. Remarks from <coughs> Alderman. Alderman Sid. Happy holidays. I hope everyone has a wonderful Thanksgiving. Alderman John Francois. Yes, uh, good evening. First, I'd like to thank everybody that actually came out for the general election uh, to vote. Uh, it was a beautiful weather. It was a big turnout. Uh, that kind of propelled me to uh, to be, uh, for my second term, to be an alderman for the uh, fourth ward. And I appreciate everybody coming out for their votes and looking forward to uh, serve you for another two years. And I just wish everybody uh, happy holidays. Thank you. Alderman Kleiner. Uh, thank you. Uh, I want to thank all the voters who came out, too, for an off-year election. We had a lot, of, a lot of turnout and a lot of support, and I really appreciate the people in the second ward. And uh, I congratulate Andrew Green and 
forward to serving with him the next two years and uh, also congratulate Sparrow Tobin and look forward to his being on the council. Um, I also want to recognize our opponent, Joe Finneran. Uh, he ran, I think, a very good campaign and uh, it, um, with a lot of hard work and a lot of enthusiasm. And uh, I think he, I hope he stays involved and I think he uh, deserves some credit for that. So thank you, Joe. Um, I was also at the uh, Stop the Violence March, and uh, I, I want to thank St. Paul's Church again for opening up the church so folks had a place to go and speak, and their message was pretty clear. It was about community, it was about stopping the violence, and it was saying that some of you know something, and if you do, and you know you do, then say something say no to gangs, say no to drugs, say no to guns, and be part of your community. And I heard that word community a lot, and, and it was um, very encouraging. Uh, <clears throat> so I, I hope that someone does speak up and that we have some success for uh, Corey White Jr.'s parents and for everyone in the community. Um, I thank the Middletown Milwaukee Hill Veterans Council and I thank Don Paris for, and, and the Elks Club and Don Paris represented Middletown at the Veterans Day event and uh, it, it, it was very nice. Thank you, Don. Um, there, next, no, next Tuesday, November 28th, is uh, the statewide online giving campaign for not-for-profits. And it's the one time a year they do this. It's called New York Gives, and the website is nygivesday.org. And you can support whatever local charity you like. Um, the one I hope people will look for, if you look under search organizations and you pick uh, select a cause, you pick homelessness and housing, you will find the greater, the Middletown uh, Greater Interfaith Council. And those are the people who support the warming station. The warming station opened uh, this past Sunday. Um, <clears throat> Andrew has kindly consented to do a web page for us and for them. So it will be middletownwarmingstation.com. I think it'll be easy to remember. Hopefully it'll be up in a day or two and we'll have links to where you can volunteer for the overnight that's, that's the hardest part, is getting people to commit and, uh, and help so that people have a place to stay at night. And they're open every single night from 9 p.m. to 7 in the morning. And uh, for the <clears throat> people who need the shelter, it's a great place to be safe and also to be off the street. Uh, so it helps the city, it helps everyone. <coughs> and um, just one little national item um, looks like we're going to lose net neutrality and you know if there's still time to call up they're going to take the internet as we know it and you won't recognize it because uh, big corporations will be able to get the fast lanes and the rest of us will be in the slow lanes and it's just a terrible thing and i hope it doesn't happen but it sure looks like it's gonna thank you Alderman Witt. Thank you very much. Uh, I would just like to uh, put my day hat on and clarify and, and or add to what Mr. Gomez spoke of about the referendum on December 5th regarding the Sale Memorial. Uh, you will receive something coming to your home about this. Uh, it will be in the form of the district newspaper. There is something in there about this. Uh, you should be getting it on the 28th or the 29th of this month, I hope. If you do not want to wait that long, you can access the information on our website at middletowncityschools.org. You can see the referendum. You can see uh, something written out that clearly un uh, states what's happening. You can see where you vote. It's going to be 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. It's the same place where you vote for the, the budget and the school board meeting. There's also video on there so you can see the discussion that the board had about this. Um, so. If you don't want to wait until it comes to your home, 
you can check it out there. Uh, also, the district just completed uh, two very successful weekend ventures. We uh, had the uh, state boys soccer championships uh, last weekend, or the two weekends back, and this past weekend we had the state semifinals in uh, football. So that were there was a lot of people that came to our area, and they all had to eat and sleep someplace. So hopefully that can continue to uh, happen here. I know we're committed through 2020 for the uh, for the soccer and another time for next year on the football. So hopefully we can take advantage of some opportunities here if you own a business to keep that in mind to try to center some promotion around that. So thank you very much. Alderman Johnson. Thank you. Um, I'm going to be so bold as to speak for Kate and myself. We certainly thank the voters for their uh, confidence. Um, we try to do a good job. I think Third Ward was well represented this evening with some of the input. Um, yes, we're still in Waterworld, um, but we're working on that. Uh, park and Rec, I think Chris just went through about 100 hours of things that could happen to kids in the next 30 days in a minute. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, the Catch Pond conversation, uh, Jacob, we know it's not your fault. Um, when you said the bank, the money doesn't do any, anybody any good in the bank, it does do somebody good. The agency that's holding the money is doing quite well with my money, and I'd like them to give it to me. Um, I want to thank our colleagues from the school board. I think it's a great opportunity to interact. Uh, Cable 20 conversation, hopefully that'll be a good conversation. Um, I want to thank the chief as well. He's hit the road running. A lot of initiatives, a lot of good things, uh, particularly um, and encouraged by the idea of reaching out to the homeless population. There is a homeless population in this community. Um, it sometimes manifests itself in not as good as ways we like it. And I'm sure none of these people expected to be where they are today. So anything we can do to give them a leg up, tell them that we are behind them, and give them a, hap uh, a safe winter, I think that's a great initiative. I thank you for that. And happy Turkey Day, gobble gobble. All right, Kasum. Good evening. Uh, you are allowed to speak for me. That was wonderful. <laughs> um, no, we do appreciate it. I think we saw probably one of our highest turnouts uh, in the third ward in years um, at that election. And whether it was the Constitutional Convention that brought everybody out in the third ward, uh, we were uncontested. It was still nice to see the support from the, the people that we serve, and we thank you for that. Um, I wanted to um, remind everyone that we have a holiday ward meeting. It is next Tuesday on the 28th at 7 p.m. right here in this room uh, for the third ward. So we encourage everyone to come out. Um, since it is a holiday meeting, there are treats. So that should draw some extra people in. Um, now, I, I wanted to speak on uh, something that happened over the weekend. Um, every year I try to work with uh, an assistant principal over at Maple Hill Elementary, Mr. Kelly. Uh, and he and the school people, people at the school, work very hard to put together full Thanksgiving meals for families in the school that otherwise wouldn't have one. Um, a couple of years ago, he approached me. He was struggling to meet the turkey county needed, wanted to know if I was any way I could help. Um, I was able, uh, through with the help of ShopRite, to come up with them the last few years. And this year, ShopRite has been giving to Turkey Trot and a bunch of organizations. And we found ourselves uh, falling a little short, uh, we thought, going into the weekend. And I just wanted to speak about the community that we live in here in Middletown because all I had to do was take to social media, say that I was reaching out, try to accomplish this goal, and once again, Middletown steps up. I had turkeys dropped to my house. I had vouchers I stopped and picked up. I had people drop off money to be purchased. And by Monday, I was happy to report that I delivered every turkey that they wanted and needed over at Maple Hill School to the school uh, with the help of our community. So I wanted to say thank you to those that helped. We have a few of them in the room tonight. I thank you. I thank everyone. Um, and it's just something, especially at the holidays, that reminds me of what it is that I love so much about Milltown and the people that are in it. Uh, and it's you that make us special. So thank you to everyone. Uh, on that note, um, happy holidays, happy Thanksgiving. The tree lighting, always one of my favorite things to do here in Middletown. Um, you can't ask for a better feeling. Christmas music is playing. The tree is lit. The town is filled with people, happy. Take that nice walk to the Paramount, watch a Christmas movie. It's a great evening. So I encourage everyone to be out. I hope the weather participate or cooperates with us that night and that it's a good evening for all of us. And that's all I have tonight. Thank you. Alderman Burr. <clears throat> yeah, I, I'd first like to thank all my constituents. 
uh, for supporting me for another term. I do appreciate it. I work as hard as I can for you. And if anything you need, you know where to find me. Uh, and on the lighter side, I want to wish everybody happy holidays. And remember my constituents in the first ward, please do not put your garbage out on Wednesday. It'll be a day <laughs> late because it's starting to be crow season. Thank you. Alvin Massey. <clears throat> Good evening. And thank you to all the voters uh, in the first ward and throughout the entire city of Middletown. I want to thank uh, Miguel Rodriguez for that uh, moment of silence for my good friend Ron Brown. Uh, I don't, many of you people wouldn't have remembered him, but uh, Ron was an advocate for the city of Middletown for many years. He uh, sat where we sit now, he sat where Miguel sits, and he also sat, he was a county legislator, so he represented the city of Middletown, the second ward, the entire city uh, for many years, and uh, he will be missed. Uh, Kevin and Vince, thanks uh, guys uh, for showing up. Uh, it's nice to see you. Uh, Memorial School, I, I'm not sure how many people in this room are old enough, but I am old enough that I did attend Memorial School for two years. Uh, I'm glad that something positive is going to come from Memorial School, so thank you for that. I'm glad that you're looking into doing this, uh, the school board meetings live again. Uh, we've always made that offer, and, and I'm glad that it could come to fruition, and uh, I hope everyone Friday night to see you down at the tree lighting, uh, what Maria and her group does, and, and uh, everyone else uh, is a tremendous uh, accomplishment, and we should have a good time Friday night, and finally, happy Thanksgiving to everyone. New business. We have a resolution sponsored by Alderman Massey to authorize the treasurer to transfer a total of $27,700 within the 2017 Fire Department operation budget. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Massey, second by Alderman Burr. Any discussion? Roll. Graham Cassoon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Burr to transfer a total of $210,000 from the fund balance to cover unanticipated retirement and registration of employees throughout the year. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Burr, seconded by Alderman John Francois. Any discussion? Roll. Graham Cassoon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Witt to authorize the mayor to sign a contract with the County of Orange for the Stop DWI Enforcement Crackdown for 2017 and 2018. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Witt, seconded by Alderman Massey. Any discussion? Roll. Brent Cassoon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman John Francois to close streets at 6 p.m. for the annual tree lighting ceremony to be held on Friday, November 24, 2017. Resolution sponsored by Alderman John Francois, seconded by Alderman Witt. Any discussion? Roll. Graham Cassoon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Jean-Francois to rescind Resolution 151-17 on June 6, 2017 for the dedication of the Underhill Road extension to the City of Middletown as this road does not meet the minimum speed requirements of 25 miles per hour. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Jean-Francois, seconded by Alderman Sid. Any discussion? Roll. Graham Cassoon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Jean-Francois? Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Jean-Francois to transfer $6,678.50 within the DPW 2017 budget to cover the cost of two spray pumps for the wastewater treatment plant. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Jean-Francois, second by Alderman Massey. Any discussion? Roll. Graham Cassoon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Massey to transfer a total of $163,276 from the general fund balance and water fund uh, to cover shortfalls in light and heat accounts throughout the city for the balance of 2017. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Massey, second by Burr, any discussion? Alderman Kleiner? 
I just wanted to mention, because I did hear this discussion that uh, what the commissioner was talking about, us buying the lights from O&R and going all um, uh, <clears throat> LED lights, and this is through ESG, and it's uh, been uh, taken longer in negotiations than they figured, so that's why we end up with this bill. Hopefully it all works out in the end. Anyone else? Roll. Rem Kassoon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John francois Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Burr to award the bids for the water pipe and gray iron castings. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Burr, second by Alderman Massey. Any discussion? Roll. Ram Kassoon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John francois Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Johnson to authorize the treasurer to transfer $360 within the Civil Service 2017 budget. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Johnson, second by Alderman Kassoon. Any discussion? Roll. Ram Kassoon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John francois Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Abstain. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Johnson. Declaring the intent of the City of Middletown Common Council to act as lead agency in the proposed action of 31 to 34 Bowles Avenue demolition and classify the project as an unlisted action as defined by CECRA. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Johnson. Seconded by Alderman Burr. Any discussion? Roll. Graham Cassoon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John francois Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Massey to transfer a total of $796 from the general fund balance to pay the remaining amount for purchase of the land on Ingracia Road in Walk Hill. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Massey, seconded by Alderman Burr. Any discussion? Roll. Ram Kassoon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John francois Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Massey to approve and adopt the 2018 city budget. Resolution by Alderman Massey, second by Alderman Burr. Any discussion? Alderman Massey. Yeah, I just want everyone to know, uh, thanks to Treasurer Don Paris and his staff, and I, and I guess in particular Denise along with him, the work that they did along with the mayor, uh, the council president, and I happen to be the chairman of finance, so that makes up the board of estimate. Every department head came in, and I want to thank the department heads. Uh, we worked on this budget a long time, and we got it down. I, I believe it's a, a really good budget uh, for the council to vote on and for the city of Middletown, but our treasurer deserves a lot of credit. So thank you, Don. Totally agree. Anyone else? Roll. Ram Kassoon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John francois Aye. Sid? Epstein? Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. That is all for new business. Motion from the floor. Resolve that the City Common Council of Middletown hereby amends the City Code to add Chapter 460 Vehicles and Traffic Section 460-28. Handicap permits only the following. One stop directly in front of 12 Knapp Avenue. A resolution by Alderman John Francois, seconded by Alderman Kassoon. Any discussion? Roll. Graham Kassoon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Local laws. Tonight we have uh, one local law that we're going to be voting on. No, local <clears throat> law number five of 2017, and this is sponsored by Alderman Jean Francois, to amend Chapter 389, sewers of the, of the code of the City of Middletown regarding out of city users. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Jean Francois, second by Alderman Kleiner. Any discussion? Roll. Ram Kassoon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Jean Francois? Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Audit. Mr. President, I move the accounts be audited, the claims be adjusted, and the city treasurer be authorized to issue warrants for the payment. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Massey, second by Alderman Burr. Roll. Ram Kassoon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? 
Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Move for adjournment. So moved.